Today we are going to see how we can deploy your first service using Corio. Corio is an internal developer platform which simplifies building, deploying and managing your cloud native applications. Uh, so it helps you focus on actually developing your application and being innovative rather than focusing on the underlying complexities of getting your app into production. So what we're going to do today is we are going to use a sample reading this service, which is also available in our QSG and we will link it in the video as well. And then we will be building and deploying it on Corio and we will go ahead and test the service. To sign up to Corio, you can uh, visit the Corio.dev website and you can use one of these options to either sign up or sign into Corio. So I have already logged into Corio and the first step is actually to create a project and inside this project we will be creating our service component. When you have a cloud native application you can create the various components like your backend service, web applications all within a same project. Go ahead and name our project book list project. You can add some sort of description that is relevant. I'm going to select the multi-repo option. Uh, with the multi-repo option, I can create various repositories to my different components within the same project. Now we can see the different components that we can create using Corio. You can create services, web applications, API proxies, web hooks, scheduled tasks, manual tasks, event handlers, and you can also use test runners to test your components. Uh, so for this example, let's go ahead and click on the service component. In this view, we have to uh, provide a component name. Let's go ahead and call it booklist service. And let's provide some sort of uh, description as well. And then uh, the next step is to authorize with GitHub. Let's click on the authorize with GitHub uh, button. You will have to authorize GitHub uh, with Corio. Uh, you, can, you might have to provide your username and password. So since I have already reauthorized before, I was able to authorize it easily. I'm going to select my organization, which is Kavishka Fernando. And now I will select the repository, which is the Scorio Sample Booklist Service. And I'm going to use the main branch. My service is a Node.js service. Therefore, I'm going to select the Node.js uh, build pack. And my project directory is the root directory. Uh, if you have a different project directory, you can click on the edit button and select the relevant directory. I'm going to select the language version as 20 and click on create. So now my component will get created. So as you can see, my component now has got already created. I'm going to click on the component. This will take me to the overview page, uh, which will show me different uh, details related to my components, such as the latest commit, the deployment statuses. Uh, so the next step is to go ahead and build the component. Let's click on the build tab. And you have the option to build the latest, which means that it will be built from the last commit. Or you can go ahead and uh, view the commits and select a specific commit and build from that. I'm going to go ahead and build the last commit, which is the latest commit. As you can see, the build action has got initiated. So what actually happens here is your code is being built and then it creates an image. And the image is pushed into the container uh, registry uh, so that we can use this image or pull this image when we want to deploy the component. So these steps will take a few minutes. So my code has been successfully built. Uh, as you can see, the three successful checks here. The next step is to deploy. Uh, let's click on the deploy tab. And you can see the development and the production environments, which are the two environments that are available for us. Uh, let's click on configure and deploy. This shows us the environment configuration step. If you have any specific environment variables that are specific to your service, you can go ahead and add them. Since I don't have any, I'm just going to click on next. Uh, or if you have any configurations that you're giving through a file mount, you can provide that as well. I'm going to click next since I don't have any. So this view shows the details related to the endpoint. Uh, you can uh, review these details and click on deploy. 
now my component is getting deployed into the development environment which was completed very quickly um, now we can see that the endpoint is active as well and the deployment status is active uh, let's go ahead and test the component to see whether it's working as expected i navigating into the test console tab and you can see all the resources that are here um, so we can get a test key and I'm going to uh, test the get books endpoint. Let's click on try it out and click on execute. We will get a list of books that are available. So you can see the response here. Uh, we have three books that are available. We can see the details of the books, the title, author, and status. So we have successfully tested uh, our API. You can go ahead and test the different resources as well uh, to insert a new book and uh, try out the other resources. So now that our API is working as expected, uh, what we are going to do is go ahead and promote it into the production environment. Let's navigate back into the Deploy tab and click on Promote. So this will promote uh, our deployment into the production environment. So you have the option of defining new configuration values or using development uh, configurations. So I'm just going to go and use the development configuration since I don't have any other. So you can, uh, it will pick up, if you select the development uh, configurations option it will pick up the configurations that you provided in the development environment or if you uh, select the new configurations you'll have to provide new configurations for this environment as well so I'm going to go ahead and click next for all the options and click promote Now uh, my uh, service is being deployed into the production environment. It got deployed very fast and quickly and it has been successfully deployed into the production environment. You can go ahead again and uh, test uh, your API. Uh, make sure that this time you select the production environment. You can get a text uh, key and let's go ahead and maybe post a new book. Let's provide the following details. Let's click on execute. And you can see that our book was added as well. So we can go to the get resource and try it out and click execute to see whether our book has been added. And now you can see four books along with the new book that we have added. So our service is working as expected. So you also have the chance of uh, checking any uh, logs uh, by navigating into the observability tab. Uh, so if you run into any sort of issues while uh, deploying your service to see if there are any issues, any issues related to it, you can navigate the observability uh, tab and view uh, the logs. And uh, there are deployment track specific, environment specific, so you can filter according to the environment and check any logs related uh, to your application. You can also view any metrics uh, that are related to your application. Uh, so we have invoked our service, so we can see some successful uh, service invocations here. You can view uh, throughput uh, and latency related data and diagnostic view related data as well. We deployed our service very easily using Corio in just a few seconds using just a few button clicks. Developers can actually focus on developing their application and focus on code and use a comprehensive platform like Corio with various features to easily deploy your service or your application and get it into production and into the market very soon. We hope you join in with our next series of videos where we will take you through how to deploy a web application using Corio. Thank you.